Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to look at something new. We're going to look at the step response of an RCL circuit. So now we will have a source, either a voltage source or a current source, and we'll have a resistor, a capacitor, and an inductor. And we're going to start with the three components in series connected to a voltage source and a switch. And at t equals zero, the switch will close, so we have a an step function of input of voltage from the source. Now, what will the voltage as a function of time look like? Because eventually, that's what we're trying to find, right? The voltage as a function of time, well, that's going to be equal to the transit or the transient voltage plus the steady state voltage. So what we're going to do here is we're going to find an equation that gives us both the transient voltage while things are settling down and then the steady state voltage and they're going to be added together. So where do we start? Well, we're going to start with KVL. We're going to add up all the voltage drops around the circuit and all the voltage rises. We start from here. Once we close the switch, we have a voltage drop across the resistor, a voltage drop across the inductor, a voltage drop across the capacitor, and a voltage rise across the source. So you can see that we have the three voltage drops plus the rise adds up to zero as we go right around the circle. We can rearrange the terms so that the sum of all the voltage drops equal the source of the, the voltage of the source. Now, the voltage across the resistor is simply the current multiplied times the resistance. The voltage across the inductor is the inductance times the change of the current with respect to time. And the voltage across capacitors, whatever the voltage is, V, this is the variable V, and that all added together equals the voltage of the source. Now we're going to rearrange the terms, put this term first, that one second, that one third. And we also need to have the definition of the capacitance, which is the charge over the voltage. Move the voltage across here. Take the derivative with respect to time on both sides. dQ dt equals I, so I equals C dV dt. If we solve for dV dt, we get I over C. If we now take the derivative of both sides again, and we move the C over to the left side, we get C times the second derivative of the voltage with respect to time equals the first derivative of the current with respect to time. Of course, there's a reason why we did that, because now what we're going to do is we're going to replace di dt by what that is equal to. So L times C times the second derivative of the voltage with respect to time plus I times R. Now I can be written as C times dV dt. So this is plus CR dV dt. And then we have plus V and that equals the source voltage. All right, now we have a differential equation. Of course, not set equal to zero, but again, if we set it equal to zero, that gives us the transient voltage. If we then take the source voltage, that will then, of course, give us a steady state voltage. All right, so let's solve the equation when we set that equal to zero to come up with the transient voltage with respect to time. So if we're going to set that equal to zero, then we end up and then we divide everything by LC. We can say that d squared V dt squared plus the C's cancel out when I divide this by LC, but I get R over L times dV dt. And then here I'll get plus one over LC times V equals zero. So we're going to solve that equation. Of course, we can replace the dV dt by S and d squared V dt squared by s squared and then we have the characteristic equation so what we can say is that s1 and s2 can be solved by saying that this is equal to the minus b which is minus r over l plus or minus the square root of r over l squared and then minus 4 times a times c which is 1 over lc like this all divided by 2a. Then if we move the 2 into the numerator, then we can say that S1 and S2 can be solved to be minus R over 2L. Plug that in here, we'll get plus or minus the square root of R over 2L quantity squared minus the force will cancel out and I end up with 1 over the square root of LC quantity squared. Now, go, of course, I want to write it in that form again because then that this means that S1 and S2 
is equal to minus alpha plus or minus the square root of alpha squared minus omega sub naught squared. Again, this is the natural frequency of the circuit. So we have the same kind of format as we had before, with one difference, is that alpha, is in this case, is r over 2l, and omega sub naught is still equal to 1 over the square root of l times c. So that hasn't changed, but the alpha has changed. And again, if we solve this equation, we could then say that if alpha is larger than uh, omega sub naught, we end up with a overdamped case. If alpha is equal to omega sub naught, we end up with a critically damped case. And of course, if alpha is less than omega sub naught, then we end up with an underdamped case. And for the transient part of the voltage, we can then say that in each of these two, three cases, so let's call this case one, case two, and case three. So in case one, we end up with the equation, just like before, where V, uh, V transient as a function of time is equal to A1 e to the S1t plus A2 e to the S2t. And for the second case, the transient voltage will be equal to A1 plus A2t times e to the minus alpha t. And for case 3, we're going to end up with the transient voltage as a function of time is equal to A1 times the cosine of omega sub d. I, I guess I can use capital D times T plus A2, the sine of omega D uh, times T times E to the minus alpha T. Put a line there so we don't get confused. All right, so now omega sub D is equal to the square root of omega sub naught squared minus alpha squared. And again, remember that in this case, alpha is r over 2L, not 1 over 2RC, like it was in the source-free circuit, uh, parallel circuit that we saw before. But you can see that the approach is the same. Of course, the steady-state voltage will be when the switch is closed for a very long time. In this case, the steady-state voltage across the capacitor will, in this case, of course, be equal to the voltage of the source. So then the steady-state voltage will simply the voltage of the source in this particular case, depending upon what the circuit looks like, and the transient voltage will then be calculated exactly the same as what we did before, but the only difference is that in this case, alpha is equal to R over 2L. Now, that will give us the voltage, the transient voltage. We can also, of course, figure out the transient current, and we'll show you how to do that in the next couple of videos, but at least here it gives us a good start to, to see how we approach a step response of an RCL circuit in the case when we have something like this. And that is how it's done.